My name is Dan Arvello, and I work in the city's public information office. I'm joined today by city manager Louis D. Pasquale and Mayor Sumbul Siddiqui, who are going to be answering questions submitted by residents. For those we can't get to, we'll be responding to people individually via email. So our first question, which is a popular one, it's about testing. Don from the port, Miriam from North Cambridge, and many others ask, is the city planning to test everyone for COVID-19 and for antibodies? When, and if not, why not? And how can we start reopening without everyone being tested? So I guess I have the first question here. So let me just start off quickly about offering the antibody testing to all residents because there has been some issues with reliability and accuracy. So we have not focused on that type of testing yet in discussion with the Cambridge Health Alliance. But what I am excited about is to say that on May 8th, the Cambridge Health Alliance uh, set up a test site for all Cambridge residents in East Cambridge at 163 Gore Street, right by the Gore Street rink. And this is for every Cambridge resident from ages eight and older, regardless of insurance and immigration status, and it's free. And this is for anybody with or without symptoms. So it's really gonna give us a chance to just see how prevalent COVID-19 is in our city, and if there are certain neighborhoods that is really uh, spiking one way or the other. So we're really excited about that. The Cambridge Health Alliance has been a leader in providing these tests. This is the third city now that they've been able to come to. Uh, we did some oval first and then Malden and now Cambridge. And as city manager, I'm also on the board of trustees and I just can't thank the Health Alliance enough for their leadership in this area. So let me just give you some information on the test site. There's a phone number because you need an appointment. You just can't walk up or drive up. And that number is, and I'll go slow, 617-665-2928. Monday through Friday between 8.30 and 4, you can call and make an appointment. And then the site is open between 9 to 4, Monday through Friday. There is a drive through site or a site that you can walk through or ride by foot or bicycle. And then finally, uh, there's a five-day turnaround for the test site. So we're really excited to be part of this, and I want to thank the East Cambridge community for accepting this, and uh, it's really been a positive. It's been up and running for about a week now, as I said, and we're really pleased to have that in our city. So more specifically, Gertrude from Wellington Harrington is concerned about the elderly, the disabled, the immigrant, the low-income populations in the city, and she wants to know why there isn't a specific testing protocol for Cambridge Housing Authority buildings and other areas like that. So the city of Cambridge actually recently ex announced that we're further expanding COVID testing uh, for Cambridge residents uh, via a new mobile testing pilot program. So we'll initially, this will be launched in the Port neighborhood and in all Cambridge Housing Authority buildings, specifically targeting seniors. So this will expand our testing capabilities with key vulnerable populations. And this is being funded by the city, uh, MIT, and it's being coordinated with the Cambridge Public Health Department uh, through a partnership with the Broad Institute and Pro EMS. So again, thank you uh, to our partners because without them, we couldn't make this uh, Happen. And so this testing will be launching this week and next week, and we'll be providing more details on the hours of operation and so forth. Great. All right, so related to testing, uh, there's also a question from Miriam in North Cambridge about contact tracing. She wants to know when Cambridge will start doing extensive contact tracing. The Cambridge Public, public, oh, the Cambridge public Department has been conducting con extensive contact tracing since the city's first case uh, was reported in March. And so what they do is the department's public health nurses reach out to each positive case to monitor symptoms, provide clinical support, and determine who they have come in contact with. Once the contacts are determined, the public health nurses or staff epidemiologists reach out to them to let them know that they were in contact with someone who tested positive. And then they ask the contacts if they are experiencing any symptoms and urge them to get tested. So contacts are called every day for a symptom and temperature check for the duration of their quarantine. And recently, the state has been partnering uh, with Cambridge through the Massachusetts 
Tracing Collaborative and other cities and towns to assist with contact tracing, uh, which is, uh, as you can understand, a huge uh, undertaking. And so for the public, if you receive a call from the Massachusetts COVID team, specifically a 833 or 857 number, please pick up the phone. Uh, contract tracing is a huge, uh, it's a huge uh, tool in fighting the spread of the disease and your name will not be released. So again, 833 or 857, if you see that number come up, pick it up. Chances are it's the Massachusetts COVID team uh, trying to trace. Okay. Uh, another popular question is related to face coverings, which we're all wearing today. Uh, Eleanor from North Cambridge uh, wants to know about the confusion between the governor's face covering order and the Cambridge order on face coverings, while Ethan from Mid Cambridge wants to know why it's necessary to fine people $300 for not wearing them. So that's a great question, and Cambridge put a lot of time into deciding whether or not we were gonna make face covering a rule. Uh, we started off by really just asking people and strongly recommended. And then from there, we just felt like, even though a lot of residents were doing it, we had to step up a little more. So we actually did a reverse 911 call asking our residents to do it, and then we stepped up a little more by actually having our public works vehicles going around to say in certain areas around parks and in neighborhoods, the, the importance of wearing masks. But after, even with all those uh, items, we felt like we needed to do more. So I think about two days before the governor put his regulations in, we put one in Cambridge. And the governor's recommendations and ours are not that far apart, really. Uh, one of the issues is on age. We say it starts at five. The governor said it should start, it can start at two, but he really left it up to the discretion of the parents of the children and said at the age five, it's mandated. So on that one there, it's, it's really similar. The biggest difference is that we have said that no matter whether you're within six feet or not, if you need to have your mask on. And in a city like Cambridge, with, its, with the density we have and the size of our city, we just felt like we needed a stronger protection for our residents because often you can turn a corner and all of a sudden you're in with a group of people. So that's the change. Ours is a little more restrictive and that we have the right to do that. Uh, so it's something that we you know, really feel is important. Uh, we think looking at some of our charts that this has helped uh, our plan and really trying to make this as informative as possible. And you know, the one thing we will continue to say is face covering is one piece but we continue to talk about you know, frequent hand washings, avoid touching your face, your mask exterior, and obviously work within the six foot rule and we continue to get that message out. One of the other questions that have come up a lot is about the fines. And I wanna say from day one, uh, myself and the mayor really wanted to stress the fact that this is not about fines. And what we really decided to send the, the strong message why it wasn't about fines is by having our police department, and I can't thank our police commissioner enough in his team to say, you know what, rather than have him look that they were around to give out tickets, we're gonna have them around to hand out masks. And in the first week of this, we handed out about 12,000 masks through the police department to our residents. And it was something that's gone over incredibly well. We were at uh, Kennedy Longfellow Park, we were at the Tobin School, we were at a lot of the breakfast sites that the school was providing. We have masks in every squad car. We actually have police pulling over into certain areas and just handing out masks. Uh, these masks are continually on order because we are going through them quickly. But this is really about spreading the word, giving the education. We had a one week learning uh, in before this started and then we had a two week really just working with the neighborhood. But we also felt that you do need some enforcement for someone who just truly for some reason doesn't think this is important and refuses to listen. And if that happens, we, you know, we, and we have to write a ticket, we will. Uh, we've made it clear though, if that happens, we'll make sure we notify the council on why and how come. But again, this is truly not about giving tickets. This is about making sure that we can help protect our residents. And I think that message has come out loud and clear. And as someone who spends a lot of time in our parks and on our streets just to see how this is going. I can tell you the amount of people that I see with masks is exceptional and I'm really proud of the residents of the city of Cambridge. Great. 
And if people still need masks or, you know, what should they do in that situation? So we are continuing to receive donations and I want to thank the Massachusetts Chinese Society uh, and our Buddhist temple on 7-Eleven Concord Ave who donated over 10,000 face coverings for residents. And the last uh, q and I had said, if you don't have a face covering, you'd like one, please email. And I did deliver um, a few to residents. Uh, and if you'd like more, my address is mayor at cambridgema.gov. And as a city manager said, you know, this is about education. Uh, we really want people to wear face coverings. Uh, again, if you're unable to wear a mask, a face covering due to an underlying health condition or physical or mental disability that prevents you from breathing properly or prohibits you from putting on and taking off your mask, you do not have to wear the mask. So there are exceptions. So I did want to point that out. And again, the city manager and I, when we're not in City Hall, we basically live here, but on the weekends we patrol and we look at who is, uh, you know, adhering. And we have to say there are people who have taken this very, very seriously. So we want to thank all the residents for their patience and their uh, compliance. Great. Next big question is about reopening. Uh, the governor's stay-at-home order is set to expire on May 18th, uh, and people want to know, specifically Jean from Neighborhood 9, Molly from The Port, Tiana and John from North Cambridge, and others want to know about reopening, specifically if city buildings will reopen on May 18th, and then what about summer programs, library services, and even school in the fall? So, great question. It's something that I talk to the mayor about regularly. Uh, we have started to look at how we would come back and open our buildings. Uh, we've been working on this now for a couple of weeks, obviously knowing that the May 18 deadline for the, mayor, for the governor was coming. We wanted to hear obviously what he has to say, but right now we've put together a small business advisory group to help our small businesses come back and how that's gonna work. We have put a construction advisory committee. As most people know, we stopped construction in Cambridge except for essential. Uh, Boston, Cambridge, and some of them did that. Uh, we are now working on how we could phase that back in. And we have a committee on how city buildings can get reopened. Uh, city buildings are closed, but I want to say we're working. Our police, our fire, our public safety, our public works department, the mayor and manager's office, our finance department, our human services department are out there providing services, and that's important. But we're gonna follow the governor's lead as well on when we should start opening up our buildings. Realistically, we have some tentative dates that would be around June 1st, but how that's gonna play out is still up for discussion. Obviously, we wanna make sure that we protect our employees, but we also wanna make sure we protect our residents and provide the service that they deserve. So we're having a lot of discussions on that. I actually met yesterday with a group of people to start talking about that. That also includes the library as well on how we would open that up. And schools, you know, that obviously they've been closed for a while. I mean, the governor should be announcing soon what his status and that is, but I'm sure the mayor has been working with the superintendent and we've had discussions that if September comes, what's that gonna look like? Because it's gonna be different. The one thing we realize here, that no matter when we open, it's not gonna look the way it looked when it was closed. And we're having a lot of meetings on that and really trying to get the time so that people can understand what we're going to look like so that we can make sure we provide the services our residents need, protect our employees, and protect our residents for when they come into contact with our employees. Uh, so for now, what about things like marriage licenses and parking permits? How do residents go about completing that type of business with the city when offices are closed? So while city buildings are closed to the public, the city is still open for business. So the city departments are regularly checking their voicemails and responding to emails. And many of the city's most common services can be completed online. And, you know, for example, if you need a birth certificate, we're mailing out birth certificates. Uh, so you can find out more about our online services at cambridgema.gov. Great. Now another really popular question uh, that... Phoebe from Strawberry Hill, Richard from Riverside, Mary from Mid Cambridge, Peg from West Cambridge, Allison from Neighborhood Nine, <laughs> Rick from Cambridgeport, 
Anna from East Cambridge and many, many others want to know why the city of Cambridge and DCR have not closed Memorial Drive to traffic and reopened Riverbend Park. So let me start off by something that's very important. This is not about vehicles. Uh, this is from our point of view about what's the safest route for our Cambridge residents. So when Memorial Drive closing was supposed to happen on May 10th and May 17th, the first two weeks, uh, we put together a panel made up of the chief public health officer, the commissioner of public health, our police commissioner, our fire chief, and our traffic and parking director, and said, what does it mean to close this down and allow residents and non-residents into our city? How will we control that? Is this the right thing to be doing? Especially with a governor still out of stay at home advisory in place, and the fact that this is a property that's not run are controlled by the city of Cambridge, is controlled by DCR and state police. So at that point in time with those uh, discussions, and we have created a COVID-19 expert panel that works with the Public Health Commissioner, it was determined that we just were not comfortable potentially allowing so many visitors and residents to be in one place in the city. Uh, we have had these discussions every week for the last four weeks. I think what we hear on the governor on May 18th may again make us continue to talk about this and revisit this. We have made it clear that our intention is hopefully to close this down and make it more pedestrian friendly and bicycle friendly. But until we're comfortable that we have some control, just in case we get overwhelmed when this does open, we needed that flexibility. So. We've recently had our police commissioner talk with the state about what authority we would have and how we could make sure that if for some reason there were a lot of people there and they weren't wearing masks and they weren't distant, and we're hoping that's not the case, we would have some enforcement possibility. We also want a protection that when we do open up, if for some reason we feel like it's not working, we'd have the flexibility to say it's not working and we may close it down. So. These are one of those areas we have spent a lot of time in. Uh, I know it's difficult. There's strong opinions uh, both ways, but we feel, again, using the experts that we have on board, talking to them weekly, that at this point in time, uh, closing of not closing a Memorial Drive was the right thing to do. But as I've said, this is an ongoing discussion. I've had numerous conversations with the mayor about this. And all of these things are changing so often that you can never say never. Uh, yes and no permanently, and that's the way we've looked at these things, and we will continue to have this discussion, and I would think eventually, hopefully, we will be closing it down, but we're still not ready to close it at this point in time. Because isn't it really about social distancing, right, and trying not to encourage people to congregate? And I th so I think it's related to that, and also I do think as we reopen and think about our phase approach, I, there's no doubt in my mind that we'll have to be thinking about space differently. Uh, it's not that we don't want people to go outside. I think we, we do want that. I think it's more of how we do it. And I think, you know, people have asked about closing streets for recreation. You know, nothing's off the table. I think it's a matter of how we do it and it all relates, right? And so we, you know, I think with the city manager, the council, there is, you know, we, we there's some urgency in in thinking about how we, uh, you know, view open space, and uh, you know, I think there's a lot of important, difficult conversations that are happening behind the scenes. I think people are like, you know, when's the decision going to happen? I, I think we're figuring out how to get to that decision yeah. and be comfortable with it. And I think with the governor's stay-at-home advisory still in place, right? We're trying to be supportive of that and encourage people to only go out when they need to. Right. Right. So uh, I think one other question we had uh, r kind of related to the last discussion is, you know, have we thought about closing other streets for recreation? And then also, when are we going to open the Fresh Pond Golf Course? So I guess I'll start with the golf course. Uh, the golf course about a week ago was ruled by the governor that it could be open, uh, as we've done with all these decisions, we put our team together and we have discussions. Uh, it's been about a week now and we're still not open, but we're making positive progress in terms of what we feel we need to have in place 
to have it open. Uh, I've met with the golf pro. I've met with the director of human services who oversees the golf course. We've talked to our public health officials. Uh, the one big difference between the golf course and Memorial Drive is even though we're kind of looking at them together in a way is the golf course, we know the limit of how many people can be on the course. It's about between 32 and 36 on the course at any given time. And over a length of a day, it would be between 150 and 180. Uh, so we're looking at that. We're looking at the impact. We have specific guidelines all worked up that we've matched to the state. And we have gone over that. I think if you remember, the state revised some of their guidelines right after the first weekend. So some of the concerns that they had were concerns that we brought up when we first saw that. So sometimes waiting and taking your time and coming up with a plan that works is the right thing, and that's how Cambridge looks at it. So I do believe, like I say with Memorial Drive, the golf course will be open at some point. We're having great discussions, uh, but we're not ready for that. And until that is open, we certainly hope that our residents would take the opportunity to, to walk through the golf course and use the open space if they feel they need to. But again, as I've stated all along, as long as the stay at home advisory is in place, our first hope is that people could stay at home, but if they can't, certainly they're more than welcome to use those facilities. So more to come, like when all of these items we talk about, but I think we're taking an approach that makes sense and in the long run, we'll make sure that our golfers, our employees and our residents are all safe when we open. Uh, that was the last question I had. Anything either of you have to add uh, to the residents that are watching? Thank you to the residents who are so patient. It's, this is not an easy time. And so it's, it's been challenging and we really appreciate everyone who's written in uh, for their feedback, their questions. Uh, and we, we're all in this together. It's very challenging, but we'll, we'll get through it. And I would just say, following up what the mayor said, we are in this together. I want to assure everybody that government is working nonstop on this. The strong bond between the mayor's office and the city manager's office has been exceptional, and we will continue to work to get through this. But again, I know this is not easy, and our residents have been exceptional, as they often are in most of the things we ask them to do. So like the mayor, I want to just start off by thanking all our residents. This is not easy on everybody, and we really appreciate all your support through these difficult times. Great. Well, thank you both. That's all we have time for. Um, for those who submitted questions, thank you very much for, for reaching out. For those who didn't see their questions answered, we'll be responding to each of you individually in the coming days. And for everyone watching, please visit www.cambridgema.gov slash COVID-19 for the latest information and updates. And please remember to continue practicing social distancing, wearing masks when you're outside your home, and washing your hands often. Thank you for watching and doing your part to keep Cambridge safe.